In section 2.4, we're going to be talking about measures of variation, which is a description of how spread out the data is. So in section 2.3, we talked about the measures of central tendency. So what does the center of the data look like? And then in 2.4, we're talking about what does the spread of the data look like? So we're talking about kind of the um, high end and low end of the data and how far between each what we call a standard deviation there is, um, which we'll get into a little later. So the first measure of variation or spread that we're going to talk about is one you're familiar with, and that is range. We use the letter R to represent range, and you're probably familiar with it being the highest data value minus the lowest data value. So it's a very, very easy to calculate measure, and that is its advantage. But it also, by the same, like for the same reason that it's easy to calculate, it has a disadvantage that uh, since we're only using the highest and lowest data values, remember those things that we called outliers. If you have an outlier, then your range is going to be very strongly affected since it's only using those two data pieces. So the disadvantage is that it is strongly affected by extreme values. And they don't have to be outliers. They could just be really large or really small, but not being outliers. And the reason that it is strongly affected is because it only uses two data values. So we are going to practice finding the range of a data set using two corporations who each hired 10 graduates. And the starting salaries are listed um, in thousands of dollars. So we're gonna find the starting salaries the range of starting salaries for Corporation A and for Corporation B. So for Corporation A, of course, the range is the highest minus the lowest. So we just look through our list. Uh, the highest is 47 and the lowest looks like 37. So our range is 10, which means the range of starting salaries would be $10,000. And range really is as simple as that to calculate. For Corporation B, the highest salary looks like 58, and the lowest salary, 23. So that is a range of 25, so a $25,000 range. Now the range between the difference in range between Corporation A and Corporation B um, may not be indicative of what's actually going on <coughs> excuse me, in the corporation. Um, because we had this $23,000 salary, all the rest of them were quite a bit higher, so that could be making that range a lot wider. Now I'm going to start a new page because what I'm gonna do next is figure out um, standard deviation, and that's gonna take me a whole lot of writing. So that's what's about to happen. Okay, let's talk about deviation and then we'll talk about um, standard deviation. So deviation, variance, and standard deviation are all measures of variation, uh, but instead of just using the one, excuse me, the two data values, they use all of the data values. So other measures of deviation, deviation, variance, and standard deviation or other measures of spread. <clears throat> 
or variance or variation. But they use all of the data values. So that makes it a little bit better of um, an indication of the spread of the data set since we're using, we're taking into account all of the data values. So deviation. Deviation of an entry or a data value, remember we called those X, is the difference between the entry and the mean. So when you calculate deviation, what you want to do is take the data value, which we list as X, and subtract the mean, which will be X bar if it's a sample, or X minus mu if it's from a population. And it's important that you always do use the data value first. <coughs> that way, if we get a positive answer, that means our data value is above the mean. And if we get a negative answer, that means our data value is below the mean. So always take the data value minus the mean. So let's go back to the example that we were just looking at and with the salaries. So you might need to flip back and forth between the page we just had with the salaries and the page we're going to be currently working on. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll just work with Corporation A. And I'm going to um, find the standard deviation, which we don't know how to do yet. We'll get those instructions on the next page of notes, but we're going to start with deviation at the beginning. We're starting salaries of Corporation A. Okay, so we'll start with the salary. And of course, that's in thousands. And remember that that is represented by the letter X because it's a data value. So I'm just going to write out my salaries for my data. And then I'm going to make a column for deviation. Now in this data, it is the starting salaries for all 10 of those graduates. So we're going to consider this to be a population. So for our deviation, we are going to be finding deviation X minus mu. So X minus, whoops, X minus mu. I did not want to write that there. Sorry about that. Um, in order to find X minus mu for each of these lines, I'm going to need to know what mu is, which is the population mean. So to do that, I need the sum of my X values because mu is the sum of the X's divided by the population size. So I add up all my data. I get 415. So my mean, population mean would be 415 divided by the 10 graduates, which is 41.5. So for each line, I'm going to be taking the data value and subtracting 41.5. So I do 41 minus 41.5. So that gives me a deviation of negative 0.5 and then 38 minus 41.5, which gives me a deviation of negative 3.5. And I'll continue doing that all the way through the end of, uh, till, all the way to the bottom here. 
So that's negative 2.5. That's positive 3.5. 1.5. Negative 0.5 again. 2.5. Negative 0.5. Okay, so my deviations, you can see that there's kind of two pieces of information we get out of deviation. One is how far or how big of a difference. It's so like 0 0.5, 3 0.5, 0 0.5, um, like that. And then the sign of the deviation tells you whether that salary was above or below the mean. So any that have a negative deviation would have salaries that were below the mean of 41500 any that have positive deviations would be above the mean of 41,500. Okay, so let's talk then about standard deviation. Standard deviation is essentially like the average deviation for a data set. So I'm gonna put that definition kind of on the next page here. What you're gonna see though, is that there's a problem with that. So what we'd like to do is find the average deviation for the data set. So remember to, that to find the average or the mean, I guess, uh, the mean would have been a better way to say that the mean deviation for the data set is that we add up all the values and then divide by the number of data values so if we're finding average deviation remember deviation was x minus mu so to find the average i would add up all of those deviations and then divide by the sample size so let's go back to our data set add up our deviations. So we have negative 0.5, negative 3.5, negative 2.5, 3.5, 5.5, negative 0.5, 2.5, negative 0.5, negative 4.5, and 0.5. <coughs> so what I get when I add those up is zero. Now that should make sense because the way that we found the mean was by adding all these up and dividing by zero. And then we looked at how far each data value was from the mean. So it makes sense that on average, we would have half of them above and half of them below and they would balance each other out. So if I'm looking for the average deviation of the data set, that's gonna be zero every time. So every time we find the deviation and then we add up the deviations, we're going to get zero. So the average deviation for any data set will always be zero. So what we're gonna do is we need to figure out a way to ignore the signs of the deviations because no matter what, when I add up all the positives and negatives, they're gonna balance out to zero. So one way that we can kind of get rid of the signs, so to speak, is to square those deviations. So if I take x minus mu and I square it, then what you're gonna see is negative 0.5 squared is 0.25, negative 3.5 squared is positive 12.25. So if I go through and square all of those numbers, then all my values will be positive. Okay, so let's write that down. We need to square the deviations and then we can average them. Okay, now this is a measure that is called population variance, since we're working with population data, it'll be called population variance. I will talk to you about um, sample variance here in a little bit. Population variance, the symbol is sigma squared. 
that is a lowercase sigma. And the way that we calculate that is we are going to compute what x minus mu is, then we're going to square each value, then we are going to add them up, and then finally we will divide by the population size. Okay, so let's do that first and then we'll talk about units. So going through and squaring all these, 2.5 squared is 6.25, 3.5 squared, oh, I already did that one, 5.5 squared, 30 .25. 0 .25. 6.25, 0 .25. 20 20 20 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25, 20.25
And remember our round off rule is to go one decimal place further. So we would round that to the nearest tenth. If we look to the right, that will bump the nine up to a zero, which makes our uh, standard deviation 3.0. And in terms of our problem, that was in thousands of dollars. So our standard deviation is going to be $3,000. Okay, let's write out the steps for finding population variance and standard deviation. You may or may not need these steps written out, um, but this is just kind of to get things organized in one spot and um, help you get your thoughts together. Just to remind you what we did. So the very first thing we did, well, we wrote down the chart, but then after we wrote down our data, we found the mean of the data set. And that was mu equaled the summation of the data values divided by the population size. Then the next thing that we did was find the deviation for each entry. And remember that that was X minus mu. The third thing we did was square each deviation. So we were taking X minus mu and squaring it. And then at the bottom of that column, we added up those numbers. Next, we found variance. Remember the symbol for variance, since it's a population, it uses those Greek symbols, and that was sigma squared, and it was found by adding up that column of x minus mu squared, and then dividing by population size. Then we could find standard deviation which was sigma, and that was by taking the square root of variance. Remember the round off rule? This is the same as what we had before, is that we don't round until the very end, and then it will be one decimal place further than the data. So what happens if we're not using a population? <coughs> Instead, we're using a sample. That actually happens a lot. We're not frequently working with population data. Most of the time we'll be working with a sample because it's too expensive to get population data. So we'll do an example of that. In many cases, a statistic is used to estimate a parameter. Remember that a statistic is a measure or characteristic that comes from a sample, whereas a parameter is a measure or characteristic that comes from a population. So our steps are going to be very, very similar to find sample variance and sample standard deviation, but there's a slight change in the formulas and of course the symbols are different. So if we have sample variance instead of 
population variants. We're going to use um, Roman letters, which are the regular ones that we normally write. So seeable variance is S squared. And the way that we find that is by figuring out the deviation. So X minus X bar this time. And then we square that and that's variance. And then we add up all those numbers and then we divide by the sample size minus one. So instead of dividing by the sample size, we divide by sample size minus one. And this is a common reoccurring thing in sample formulas. Instead of dividing by the entire sample size, we divide by n minus one. Then sample standard deviation. Remember for standard deviation, we took the variance and we did the square root. So standard deviation is the letter S. And so that's going to be the square root of sample variance. So once you find variance, you'll just take the square root of it to get standard deviation. Okay, we have an example for finding sample standard deviation for high school football players that suffered concussions. So see if you can find that. And get it taped in there. In a study of high school football players that suffered concussions, researchers placed the players into two groups. Players that recovered from their concussion in 14 days or less were placed in group one. Those that took more than 14, 14 days were placed in group two. So the recovery times in days for group one are listed below. We are going to find sample variance and standard deviation for recovery times. So our data is going to be recovery time which we'll label as X because that's our data values. And we just want to list those out. Okay. Then our next step is going to be the same as what uh, we had with the population, which is going to be to find the mean. So to find the mean, that's going to be X bar this time since it's a sample. And remember, X bar is the sum of the data values divided by the sample size. So we need to find the sum of the data values. That is 90. And then we'll divide that by the sample size, which was 12. So 90 divided by 12 is 7.5. So our mean is 7.5, our sample mean. So then our next column is going to be deviation. Deviation was the difference between the data value and the mean. So that is going to be X minus X bar. So I'm going to be taking 4 minus 7.5. So that's negative 3.5. Um, I'm going to actually show you a small shortcut now because the next thing we're going to do is X minus X bar squared. So if you're going to use your calculator to figure out 4 minus 7.5, then while you already have that on your screen, just do the square button so you get all of that at the same time and you're not having to type as much stuff into your calculator. So then I'll have 7 minus 7.5, which is negative 0.5, square that, 0.25. So um, you should probably practice 
doing this instead of just copying what I'm doing. to make sure you know what you're doing. Okay, once you have that column filled in, then the next thing we need to do is figure out variance, and from there we'll get standard deviation. Remember, variance is S squared, since it's sample data, and it's going to be the sum of X minus X bar squared divided by N. So I need to add up this column. And I get 39. So for variance, I have 39 divided by the sample size of 12, which is 3.25. Now, if they're asking me, oh, sorry, it's n minus 1. Probably you were hollering at me through the video that it was divided by n minus 1. So it's divided by 11. So 39 divided by 11. So 3.545454, that's repeating. So that goes forever. So if they ask me to answer the question, what is variance? Then at this point, I will follow the round off rule and say variance is 3.5. And the units for that um, don't make any sense because <coughs> it would be square days. So we'll just leave the units off. And then we'll figure out standard deviation. Standard deviation is S. And remember, it's the square root of variance. So um, what I want to do is take the square root of the number that I got up here. Um, and I want to do that before I did any rounding. So for S, it's going to be the square root of 39 divided by 11. So I want to do that in my calculator because I don't want it to do any rounding until the very end. So I'm actually going to type in the whole thing and I get 1.88293743. I'm sure it goes on past that, but that's what I'm able to see on my calculator. So for my standard deviation, I can round at the very end and figure out the standard deviation would be 1.9 days. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, isn't there a faster way to figure out the mean and standard deviation and all that stuff? And the answer to that question is, of course there is, because we have wrapping calculators that can do all that stuff. However, um, there will be times that you have to calculate it by hand on a test, and so you need to know how to do that. Um, using your graphing calculator to check things is a great way to use that resource. There will also be times when I ask you simply to use your graphing calculator to find those values. So I'll give you the instructions on how to find them using your calculator. There are a couple of questions on your homework assignment 
where I will ask you to use your graphing calculator. And then there are some that I really want you to do by hand, even though I know that you could cheat and use your calculator. Please don't because you need the practice so that you know what you're doing for the test. So on the calculator, the first thing we need to do is store our data. Now to store the data, we do that the same way we did with regression. So we're going to go to the stat menu on your calculator. Mine is in lowercase for some reason, but it's right here. So in the stat menu, and then we're going to choose number one, edit. And we only have one list of data. So we just type in our data in one of the lists. It doesn't really matter which list you use because you'll be able to tell your calculator which list to calculate. So then to compute the values, you're going to again use the stat menu, but this time you're going to arrow over one to calc. So arrow over to calc. And then you're going to make choice number one, which is one variable statistics. When you do all of that stuff, let's see. Um, on my calculator, when I, when I push that, it gives me the option to tell it which list my data is in. So remember to change the list number, you push second and then whatever list number it's stored in. So second two gives me list two. My data is going to be in list one. So I'm going to do second one, which will get me back to list one. Frequency list means if we had a frequency table, um, like how many times is that value in there? We're just going to enter our data. So we're not going to use a frequency list. So we're going to leave that blank. And then we have to arrow down to calculate. And then your output is going to be like a whole bunch of stuff. So let me show you what all of the output things are. The output, they are going to list out lots of stuff. The first line is going to be X bar. The next line is sum X and then sum X squared, SX, sigma X, N, and then min x, q1, median, q3, max x. So let me tell you what all those things are. x bar is the mean. Now I realize it's using the symbol for a sample mean, but the calculator does not know whether your data is a sample or a population. And since the formula is the same for both, um, this, there's only one mean listed. <laughs> sum of X is the sum of, of, of all the data values. So if you wanted to calculate the mean by hand, you could use the calculator to add up the data values and then you could divide by N. N is the uh, number of data values. And again, the calculator doesn't know if it's a population or a sample. So it just uses the sample notation. Uh, if it's a population, it's the same anyway. It's how many data values there are. So you can figure out the mean by hand by doing sum of X divided by N, or you can look at the mean here. Sum of X squared is the sum of, if I took all the data values and squared them, so I would square the data values first, and then I would add them up because we still follow order of operations. Now these two right here are both standard deviation. Remember the calculator does not know if you have a sample or a population. So it's gonna give you both of those computations. So this one is going to be your sample standard deviation. And then this one is going to be your population standard deviation. 
And then these last five numbers here have to do with measures of position. They are not things we're ready to use right now, but we will use them later. <coughs> so I have a problem that I want for you to type into your graphing calculator. and figure out the mean and standard deviation for. So using technology to find standard deviation. Here we have office rental rates in dollars per square foot per year for Los Angeles. And this is a sample, sample office rental rates. Use technology to find the mean rental rate and the sample standard deviation. So very first thing we will need to do is in our calculator, we will go to stat stat menu and then edit number one. Now there is data already in some of my lists in fact, I've already entered the data for this problem in my list. Um, if I need to clear out a column of data, what I need to do is arrow up to the name of the list, and then I'm going to push the clear button, not the delete button. So the clear button is right here, clear. And then I arrow back down, and that list will be cleared out. If I go up there and I hit delete, now my list two is completely gone. We can put it back in there by doing second insert and then the name of the list, which will be second and then L2. And then you'll see when I hit enter, that list is back. So if you delete a list, you can fix it, but it's best not to just to clear it. So if I clear li list four, remember I go up to the name, push the clear button, and then arrow back down. So maybe pause the video and type in all of your data values that go with this example here. Make sure that you type them in accurately because if there's one that's messed up, your mean and standard deviation will not match mine. Okay, I'm going to assume that you have those typed in now. And we'll go on to the next step, which is to compute the values. So once I have the data entered, then I'm going to go to stat over to calculate. And I'm choosing number one, one variable statistics. Now, if I had my list in a different place, I would change the name, but mine is in L1. So I arrow down to calculate, hit enter. And it gives me all of this information. I can scroll down and see more information. I can scroll back up. But what we're going to get out of this is that we need the mean, which will be X bar. And we need the sample standard deviation, which will be S. Um, in the calculator, it's listed as S X. You can see. So the mean would be 30.9583333. But since um, we're using the round off rule, that will be 30 point, well, I would round the nine up. So it will be $31 per square foot per year. And then for my sample standard deviation, I'm going to be using the S because it's a sample rather than the sigma because that's for our population. And you'll see the numbers aren't very different, but they're different enough that you'll get it wrong if you choose the wrong one. So sample standard deviation 12.58874296. Following the round off rule, I will go one decimal past my data, and then that's going to round up because there's an eight. So it will be 12.6 dollars per square foot per year. I want to talk a little bit about how we use standard deviation to describe the spread of data. And there's going to be a difference between um, 
comparing standard deviations for data set that have the same means and data sets that don't have the same means. So first we're going to talk about when the data sets have approximately the, have the same units um, and approximately the same means. So. When data sets have the same units and approximately the same means, they don't have to be exactly, but in the right, you know, in the same neighborhood. Standard deviation helps us compare the spread of the data. So what that means is when we have um, a mean that is the same, then the higher the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is. So we're going to look at a few data sets here. I have an example here. So they want us to, um, without calculating, we're going to figure out the, we're going to estimate the population standard deviation of these data sets. So you'll notice that the mean of each data set is the same, but the data is not the same at all. Okay, so what, I, what I've got going on here, on this first data set, the mean is 4 because every single data value is 4. On this one, the mean is 4 because I have half of the data values are 3, half of the data values are 5, so when I average them, I get a mean of 4. And then on this third data set, I have um, two data values that are one, two are three, two are five, two are seven. So when I average those out, I get a mean of four. So it makes a difference when you're talking about data, whether the mean is the same for all three, but the standard deviations are different. For example, I could have um, a test average be 70% in two different classes, but in one class, like a couple people got Ds, a couple people got Bs and almost everyone else got Cs, but in another class, the average could be 70 and I have like half of my students get um, 40% and half of my students get 100% and that's a way different looking data set uh, from a teaching perspective. So we're going to estimate population standard deviation. Remember standard deviation is how far away the data is from the mean. So in this problem, here's the mean the mean is 4, and every single data value is 4. Remember when you calculate standard deviation, we take the data value minus the mean, we square it, and then we average that. So if I take the data value minus the mean, I'm going to get 0. So in this case, my, average, or my standard deviation is 0. In this problem here, if I want to estimate standard deviation, I'm taking my data value minus the mean. Well, every data value is one away from the mean. So data value minus mean is one, square it. Data value minus mean is one, square it. Data value minus mean is one, square it. When I average those up, I'm going to get one for my standard deviation. Now on this one, the mean is four. So these pieces of data are negative one away. These are negative three away. These are positive one away. These are positive three away. So if I average those out, I have 
two that are negative three, two that are negative one, the two that are negative three and the two that are positive three are each um, like they balance each other out and the ones and negative ones balance each other out. So the average distance away that our data values are would be between one and three away. So I would say that our standard deviation is about two. So now let's look at the spread. When our standard deviation is zero, the data is very, very clustered at the mean. When our standard deviation is two, our data is spread out from the mean. And when our standard deviation is one, it's closer than the two, but it's more spread out than the zero. Okay, let's take another look and kind of put some data in order from highest to lowest standard deviation. I'm just going to draw these. I'll have three. I'm going to pause this and draw. Okay. Take a look at these distributions. Uh, in all three of these, their X bars are the same. So the mean is the same for each of these data sets. Now I want to know which data set has the highest standard deviation and which data set has the lowest. And that would by process of elimination give us the middlest, right? So the highest standard deviation, which means the data is spread out farther from the mean than any other data set. So here, all of our data values are at the mean. Here we have some at the mean, some above, some below. Here we have none at the mean, a bunch above and a bunch below. So this one is going to have the lowest standard deviation because all of our data values are right at the mean. And then the one that's the most spread out from the mean would be this one. So this one has the highest standard deviation and this one has the middlest standard deviation, whatever, the one that's in the middle, not the highest, not the lowest. Now this method of comparing um, standard deviations to decide how spread out the data is only works if the data sets have the same units and the means are approximately the same. So if I wanted to compare like the average test score in first hour versus second hour, that would work. But if I wanted to um, compare something that has either different units like salary and age, then I would not be able to use the means and the standard deviation to compare spread. I would have to use something different called coefficients of variation. So I'm going to write that down. We're not going to talk about coefficient of variation today, but I want you to have this information here. So if data sets have different units or means that are not approximately the same, you cannot compare spread using standard deviation. You must use something called coefficients of variation. And it's very simple to compute. You just have to know that you have to use it. So different units means that are not approximately the same. We will finish 2.4 in another video.